today let's study about the pelvic diaphragm to understand the pelvic diaphragm we need to know few features of pelvis now what we are seeing the pelvis is made up of sacrum and the two hip bones okay sacrum and the two hip bones okay now this is the pelvic inlet this is a pelvic inlet and this is the pelvic outlet this pelvic outlet is completely covered okay is covered by the pelvic diaphragm to understand the attachments of pelvic diaphragm we need to know few structures okay we need to know few structures in relation to the pelvis okay now what you are seeing is actually the pelvic cavity so we can see this foramen is the obturator foramen this is the obturator foramen which is bridged by the obturator membrane this obturator foramen is bridged by a membrane in the living which is called as obturator membrane you can see this is the obturator membrane from the obturator membrane and from the surrounding bones that is actually the iliac bone from the ischiopubic ramus from the parts of the ischium okay and also the part of the superior pubic ramus from here we have a muscle which is originating which is called as obturator internus which is represented by this color okay this this is the obturator internus muscle okay this is obturator internus muscle we can see this is the origin of the obturator internus around the around the bones surrounding the obturator foramen and also from the obturator membrane okay and this tendon the tendon of this muscle will be emerging out of the pelvis through this lesser sciatic notch you can see see emerging out through the lesser sciatic notch and it gets attached onto the greater trochanter of the femur onto the greater trochanter of the femur that is the insertion so the greater trochanter will be like this and this muscle the obturator internus is inserted into the greater trochanter of the femur by emerging out through the lesser sciatic notch so in our previous video we have mentioned about the greater and the lesser sciatic notch and greater, greater and lesser sciatic foramen and the structures passing through in that we have not told about the tendon of the obturator internus you can note this point also so this is the tendon of the obturator internus which emerges out through the lesser sciatic foramen and gets inserted into the great uh, into the greater trochanter of the femur okay so how these two foramen are formed the greater sciatic foramen and the lesser sciatic foramen by these two ligaments one is the sacro tuberous ligament and the other one is the sacro spinous ligament which is attached to the ischial spine so this spine here it is called the ischial spine okay one is attached from sacrum to the ischial spine that is the sacro spinous ligament other one is attached from the sacrum to that of the ischial tuberosity this is the ischial tuberosity and it is called sacro tuberous ligament so it is converting these two notches the greater sciatic notch and the lesser sciatic notch into two foramens the greater sciatic foramen and the lesser sciatic foramen okay so these are the structures we need to know before learning the pelvic diaphragm now we'll go into the pelvic diaphragm proper the pelvic diaphragm is formed by two muscle groups namely the levator ani and the coccygeus muscle okay the levator ani and the coccygeus muscle of both sides together will form the pelvic diaphragm which will be closing the closing the pelvic outlet which will be closing the pelvic outlet and it will provide passage for the anal canal and also the urethra okay and in, and vagina in case of females this pelvic diaphragm is a structure which will be separating the pelvis from that of the perineum so perineum will be present superficial to that of the pelvic diaphragm okay so this pelvic diaphragm will be separating the pelvis from that of the perineum now we will describe about the two muscles or the two components of the pelvic diaphragm so the first one is the levator ani first we'll see about the levator ani muscle so coming to the levator ani the levator ani consists of two parts one is the pubo coccygeus and other one is ilio this is the ilium so ilio coccygeus so it will have a pubo coccygeus and an ilio coccygeus first we'll see what is pubo coccygeus what it is what is its origin okay and what are its parts the pubo coccygeus has got three parts an anterior part a middle part and a posterior part okay an anterior part a middle part and a posterior part now this model 
what we are going to attach here will be representing the anterior and the middle part okay we are going to consider anterior and the middle part here so these are the anterior fibers these anterior fibers will be looping around the prostate in case of males and vagina in case of females okay so we can see it is taking origin from the pubic bone we can see the inner aspect the pelvic surface of the pubic bone the anterior fibers are taking origin for origin from the pelvic surface of the pubic bone on either side and gets inserted in the center point here and this insertion point is called the perineal body okay it is getting inserted to the perineal body either side the fibers are getting inserted into the perineal perineal body in male since it is looping over the prostate if this muscle is called levator prostate okay this muscle is called levator prostate in case of males in case of females since it is surrounding the or looping over the vagina it is called the sphincter vaginae okay it is called the sphincter vaginae okay now we'll see the next set of muscle fibers these are the middle group of fibers okay the middle group of fibers which will be taking origin from the body of the pubis itself but on the lateral aspect the lateral aspect of the body of the pubis and it will be surrounding the junction the anorectal junction okay it will be looping over the anorectal junction here when it is looping over the rectum anorectal junction it is also merging with the muscle fibers or the muscle coat of this anorectal junction okay it is merging with the muscle coat of the anorectal junction so this is the rectum which will continue as the anal canal below the level of the diaphragm okay below the level of the diaphragm only it will continue as anal canal so this is the anorectal junction so these fibers also merges with that of the fibers of the anorectal junction okay anorectal junction the rest of the muscle fibers which will which does not merge with the muscle coat of the rectum will loop to the other side and merges with the muscle coat of the opposite side okay merges with the muscles of the middle coat of the opposite side middle layer of the opposite side and these middle fiber layer or the middle fibers will constitute the puborectalis muscle so this layer of muscle is called puborectalis muscle so this is a puborectalis muscle let's see the posterior fibers okay the post posterior fibers to understand the attachment of the posterior fibers what we need to know is about the fascia covering this obturator internus this obturator internus is covered by a thick fascia called the obturator fascia okay so this obturator internus is covered by a thick fascia called the obturator fascia and this obturator fascia is thickened in the midline here okay in the midline here Okay, here along the attachment of the muscles of the pelvis it is thickened here to form so this layer will form a tendinous arch or the white line okay which will form a tendinous arch or the white line over the obturator fascia or the white line of the obturator fascia now we'll see about the third group of muscle layer that is the posterior group of muscle fibers so we'll represent the posterior group of muscle fiber by using this pink color and this will be taking origin from the anterior half anterior half of this white line okay it will be taking origin from the anterior half of this white line and it gets inserted into the structure which is present here i'll tell you these structures this is the coccyx okay this is the coccyx coccygeal bone okay coccyx and this is actually the anococcygeal ligament this green structure here is the anococcygeal ligament okay so it is going to get inserted into the anococcygeal ligament and the tip of the coccyx and to the tip of the coccyx now we'll keep that muscle now we can see the origin and the insertion of the last group that is the posterior group of fibers we can see it is taking origin from the anterior half of the white line okay or the tendinous arch and it is getting inserted into the anococcygeal ligament and the tip of the coccyx and it is getting inserted into the anococcygeal ligament the green structure and the tip of the coccyx that is a yellow structure okay so that is about the posterior group of fibers so these are the three components of the pubococcygeal part okay these are the three components of the pubococcygeal part so what are the three components the anterior fibers which are called the levator prostate in case of males or the sphincter vaginae in case of females and the middle fibers which are called the puborectalis okay middle fibers which are called the puborectalis and the posterior group of fibers 
okay and the posterior group of fibers okay which will together form the pubococcygeous part next we are going to see about the iliococcygeous part of levator ani iliococcygeous part of levator ani the iliococcygeous part the iliococcygeous part take origin from the posterior half of this white line okay now the posterior half is free okay from the posterior half of the white line and also the pelvic surface of the ischium and the ischial spine pelvic surface of the ischial spine mainly the pelvic surface of the ischium and the ischial spine okay that will be the origin then where it gets inserted so it travels medially and gets inserted into the last two pieces of the coccyx okay it gets inserted into the last two pieces of the coccyx and also onto this green structure the enococcygeal ligament onto this green structure the enococcygeal ligament okay so that is about origin and insertion of the iliococcygeous part now we'll see the model so this orange part will represents the represent the iliococcygeous part which is taking origin from see the posterior part of the white line and also from the ilium uh, sorry also from the ischium and the ischial spine okay ischial spine on the pelvic part and gets inserted into the, the last two pieces of the coccyx and also the ligament the enococcygeal ligament so that is about the iliococcygeous part of levator ani so the entire levator ani is over so this much is the levator ani now the last component of the pelvic diaphragm what we need to know is the coccygeus okay last component is the coccygeus now we'll see about coccygeus this coccygeus take origin from the ischial spine the pelvic surface of the ischial spine and also from this ligament the sacrospinous ligament and also from the sacrospinous ligament from here and it gets inserted into the into the coccyx and also the last piece of the sacral bone okay the last piece the fifth piece of the sacral bone now this pink muscle the pink color structure what we are shown here is actually the last component that is the coccygeus the muscle is taking origin from the ischial spine and is getting inserted into the last piece of the sacral bone and also to the coccygeal bone okay to the side of the coccyx so that is about the coccygeous part of levator ani so this entire thing is called the levator ani okay so now coming to the structures which are, which are transmitted through this pelvic diaphragm you can see this is actually the rectum which will continue as the anal canal below the pelvic diaphragm okay so it is transmitting the rectum which continues as the anal canal then this is actually the vagina in case of females okay it's transmitting the vagina in case of females anterior to it you can see a small yellow color structure here that is actually the urethra in case of females in case of males instead of these two structures here we have the prostate and the prostatic part of the urethra okay here we have the prostate and the prostatic part of urethra now other than the structures transmitted what are the other functions of this pelvic diaphragm so this side also the pelvic diaphragm will be there so it is entirely covering the pelvic cavity okay it is covering the pelvic outlet okay it closes the posterior part of the pelvic outlet one second point it fixes the levator ani will fix the perineal body and supports the pelvic viscera okay levator ani along with the perineal body will support all the pelvic visceras so it will prevent the prolapse of any important structures of the pelvis whenever there is a raised intra abdominal pressure like in case of sneezing coughing yawning or in case of uh, defecation or micturition whenever there is an transient or transient increase in the intra abdominal pressure all the organs of the pelvic cavity are held in place without getting prolapsed by means of this pelvic diaphragm so it forms a very important structure to maintain the integrity of the pelvis and also it plays a very important role during parturition okay during childbirth and second stage and also in the uh, and also in the second stage of labor okay and also in the mainly in the second stage of labor so this is about the function of the levator ani thank you